All right. What I'd like to do today is go over the drawing part of the, the Doodle application. Um, last time we sort of went um, into the view um, and looked at things such as the accelerometer and how that handles the clearing of it and a few other things. So when we talk about this, I think it's going to benefit us if we take a few minutes to look at, at the pieces of what goes on when we're drawing this. All right? There are several objects, and uh, there are several objects at work here, so I want to make sure that we understand them all. Um, understand what their purpose is, then when we look at the code, it will make a lot more sense. Um, so I'll try to preview what the code is going to do, and um, first of all, what the, what the classes do, what the objects do, then what the code does, and then we'll actually look at the code. Um, and I, I, again, um, some of the things that I don't remember without staring at the code, you know, I'll go over to the degree that I remember them, and then when we see the code, we'll see the details. First thing we have going on is we have on the on our activity of the U and associated with that view is an image view. The image view is what allows us to see images on the screen. And we've seen that before in the flag example and in a lot of the examples. Even going back to the very first one, we had a couple of image views. So the image view is really the view that we see on the screen. All right? Now, there is also a bitmap in this example. And what's a bitmap? A bitmap is literally a map of bits. In other words, each pixel, you know, if you talk about an image, an image is, is a two-dimensional grid of pixels. So, we had a grid that looked like this, or we had a bitmap that looked like this. This is greatly, greatly magnified. This would be a grid that is 5 pixels high and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 pixels wide. Um, again, this being greatly, greatly magnified. A typical one, you know, would be several hundred by several hundred. Each of these pixels is assigned a number. And it's assigned a number based on the color. All right? Now, the more numbers that we store, the more colors we can store. Um, in video games, they always, uh, they a lot of times talk about the old video games which are 8-bit. All right, 8-bit would essentially mean that there were 8 binary digits, or 1 byte, assigned per color. So, that would be uh, 2 to the 8th power, or 256. So, that's why in those older games, you know, you didn't get the realistic coloring. You know, you, you, you were limited in the color palette that, that you have. All right? But with a bitmap, again, each of these is represented by a number. And that number, you know, is like a mosaic. That no, uh, those individual bits, when pieced together, form an image. All right? Now I can take this bitmap and pop it on this image view. What I'm going to do in this application is I'm going to manipulate that bitmap object, all right, and then I'm going to take the bitmap object and stick it in the image view. You could think of the image view as sort of being like a frame that's going to show an image. And it can show a bitmap, but it can show images from other sources as well. You know, it could show from, from a file. It could show uh, an image. All right. There is a canvas. object. And the canvas object is associated with a bitmap. And the canvas object allows us to like draw on a bitmap. Alright? So, 
if we remember our application, as we go and we drag our finger and draw on the screen, we are manipulating the canvas object, which in turn manipulates the bitmap. So as we go and we move our finger across, or fingers, as we're moving it, we're actually manipulating that canvas object that's associated, that's tied to this bitmap. And then that bitmap gets stuck in the picture frame. Last, is a paint object. And we can think of a paint as being like a paint brush. It has information about what we're going to be drawing. All right? For example, the width of the brush, the color of the brush, the opacity of the of the brush. In other words, when we draw is it completely not see-through, or is it a bit transparent where we can see stuff that's going on underneath of it? So, we use our paintbrush, paint object, to draw on the canvas. That canvas is tied to a bitmap, and then the bitmap is popped into the image view. Now, if we look at our application, Two of the menu options are associated with the paintbrush, right? This one is the color, where I go and I set the color, and I set the opacity. So if I make this red, and a little bit transparent, then when I draw, you can see underneath, color that's underneath. The width option also sets parameters in the paint object. So if I draw that because I made it to not be completely solid but to be partially transparent. As I go and cross that, you can see where the two colors overlap you can see a bit of each of them. Those two menu selections are what's controlling the paint object because it's setting the width of the brush, the color of the brush, and the opacity of the, br of the brush. So we can sort of see, uh, we, we have an interface into that. The rest of the stuff sort of works behind the scenes. Now here's something to notice that as I draw, and as I go and change the color of this guy, as I go and change the color, I don't change the color of the stuff that's already there. All right? That's interesting. That's something to note. All right? That'll be critical when we look at the code. All right? Uh, some of the things that we do in the code may seem confusing until you realize, well, we need to remember what this was originally drawn with. In other words, if I go and I make my brush red, draw a bit, change it to green, the red stuff shouldn't change to green. All right, the, the red stuff should stay red. And it does that by not drawing the new thing each time, but remembering in a bitmap what was there already all right, and then going and drawing using that every time you draw on it as a starting point to add the new color. So if I drew a line that was red, it's going to remember in a bitmap, the bitmap of the red line, I go and use change my paintbrush, draw a green line. It doesn't start with a blank canvas and redraws both the lines. It starts with the bitmap that was already there, 
brings that in as a starting point, so the red line is the starting point, and then we go and add the green line. Effectively, what we're going to do is every time we draw something, we're going to more or less grab the bitmap that's stored in that image, use it as our starting point, draw our new stuff in it, draw our new stuff on the canvas that's associated with that bitmap, then we're going to take the bitmap and pop it in the frame. All right? So that's sort of the, the steps that we're going through. Now, to muddy the waters just a bit, we can actually be drawing several lines at the same time if we use multiple fingers. So if I use two fingers going across it, I'm actually drawing two lines going across it. So we've got to keep track of that, too. All right? and, and our code has to be able to handle that. It has to be able to handle multiple touches. Right? Because if I go, if I go and use two fingers going down like that, that's actually two events. That's two touches. All right? And our code has to be able to handle both of those. Now, let's take a look. at the actual code and see how it accomplishes all this stuff. stuff. Okay, we're using a custom view here. We're using a doodle view which extends view. Again, extends, you know, means it inherits from view, which means that anything you can do to a view, you can do to this. All right. Let's look at these um, instance variables here, and let's make sure we understand what they are. We have a bitmap. That is going to remember what has been drawn before. Okay? So that bitmap is going to remember what we have drawn before. So that we can add to it. And it needs to remember what we've drawn before because if we add to it, we want the old colors and old widths and all those old properties of the paintbrush to stay. All right? So we're going to remember what was drawn previously so that we can add to it. All right? That's what the bitmap does. We have a bitmap canvas. Remember, we don't really manipulate a bitmap directly. We draw on a canvas, and that canvas is sort of associated with, or laid on top of, if you will, a bitmap. So if we draw, if we want to change that bitmap, we need to write to the bitmap canvas, or draw to the bitmap canvas. We then have a couple of paint brushes, a couple of paint objects. I forgot about the second paint brush. The one paint brush, paint line, is the paint brush that goes and, how do I want to say, goes and um, draws the line that we're drawing. All right, on the bitmap. The paint screen draws the same line on the screen. So we're actually drawing, when we draw, we, we're drawing two things. All right, and we'll, we'll play around with this to see exactly how this works. This is the one little catch I forgot about in this application. Because what I'm drawing 
I'm actually going to be drawing on two things. All right? As I draw the line across like that, I am drawing a line on the screen. When I let go, I draw that line on the bitmap in memory and then create the screen from the bitmap in memory. Now that's a little confusing and we'll explore why we do that in a second. It, it, it seems redundant, like why do I have to do both of those things? Why do I need to draw it on the screen and then also draw it over top the bitmap on memory? We'll see what happens if we don't do one or the other. All right, we'll go and we'll comment out some of the code and we'll see what happens if we don't do one or the other. At any rate, the paint screen is a paintbrush that's associated with the screen. So, this guy fires up. We set some of the properties of our paintbrush. Anti-alias, which is a, a graphical thing. We can talk about it if you have questions about it. Um, there's a couple other properties I didn't mention. The, 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 the manner in which the... Uh, the, the thing is, uh, um, you know, if I draw a line, is it going to be a solid line or, a, or whatever, other things? What's the end of the line going to look like? The end of our lines are round, if you notice when I draw them on here. And we set a couple other properties of it. We set a default width, a default color, and so on. Now, one thing I didn't talk about is... These two essentially arrays, which correspond to the paths that are currently being drawn. All right? Because remember, we're not just drawing one line, we're drawing multiple paths. So we really need to keep track of those. All right? And we'll see why in, in, in a minute here, why we're keeping track of those. You'll notice throughout this, we have an invalidate function. We're going to be calling this in. Uh, we're calling this invalidate method um, often throughout this process. What invalidate says is invalidate says you need to redraw the screen. So when we call that invalidate method, what that does is we're telling the program something has changed, we need to refresh the screen. All right? So in any code where you want to refresh the screen, like if you had a counter or a timer showing the time, and you wanted to refresh something, you could say invalidate, and that would cause it to redraw the screen. To be more precise, to be more precise, when we say invalidate, the views on draw method gets called. So invalidate indicates we need to redraw the screen. How does that screen get redrawn? Redrawn? It gets redrawn by the onDraw method. And as you can see, what does it do? It draws the bitmap on the screen. Bitmap being what? Being the saved bitmap in memory, all right, and then it draws the lines that are stored in those arrays. So every time we redraw the screen, what do we do? We refresh the screen with what it was before, and then we redraw the line. All right. 
line or lines, the lines are, that were actively being drawn. This is what redraws the screen, canvas, draw bitmap. Bitmap is the bitmap that's in memory, so that's remembering what used to be on the screen. And we use that paint screen paintbrush to do that. And then finally, we loop through all the lines that are currently being drawn and, and draw those on the screen as well. You'll notice we're going to call invalidated a couple points. Again, in a nutshell, what that does is it says that something has happened in the code where we need to redraw the screen. So it wouldn't be enough to erase the bitmap or to clear the bitmap or to clear all those things. We have to go in and invalidate it, otherwise it's not going to redraw it. The set methods are associated with our paintbrush. And if we look back at our view, these are the guys that get called when we change things via our menu. So if we change the width via our menu, the set width gets called. If we change the color, the set color gets called. Here's where the fun starts. Here's where we actually start drawing it. We have our on-touch event, which again, with a view, that fires off whenever we interact with that view. That is, whenever we touch the view. We first of all look to verify what kind of event it is. If it's a touch event, we call this touch started event. If we're done and we've lifted our finger off the screen, we call the touch ended event. Lastly, if we've simply moved our fingers across the screen, we get the touched moved event. So essentially, we have three events that we're interested in when we're drawing this line. We start out with our blank screen. We start out with our blank screen. We are interested when they first touch the screen. Notice when I first touch the screen, really literally nothing happens. It might be hard for you to see because my finger's in the way. But then as we move it, we draw the line, and as we lift our finger up, something happens as well. We're done drawing that line. We're ready to draw the next. So that's the three events that we're interested in. The start of a touch. start of the touch, the movement, and then finally the end of the touch when we pull our finger off of it. And we have three methods associated with that. Touch started, touch ended, and touched moved. For now we're just going to focus on, we're going to keep it simple and focus on if there's one finger drawing at a time. But again, we could actually have several of these things like going on at the same time. All right, but we'll ignore that for now. Notice, at the end of this, we invalidate. What does that mean? 
Something happened on the screen. So we know we have to redraw the screen. Either they moved the finger, or they started a touch, or they ended a touch. So at any rate, something happened. Therefore, we need to redraw the screen. When we first touch the screen, this touch started event gets fired, or, or method gets fired. And it has three parameters, the x and y coordinates, and it has a line ID, a line index. It got that from the onTouch event. Each event apparently has an index associated with it. The reason for this is, again, we can kind of ignore that for now because we're going to focus on the single finger drawing. But if we were doing multiple finger drawings, we'd want to know what line to associate that point with. We need to keep track of, if I was drawing with two fingers, that this point belongs to the index fingers line and this finger belongs to the middle fingers line. So we get an index, that action index is sort of a unique identifier apparently, that, that specifies which event this is associated with. So down here, in our touch started event, we can um, add that point to the event, or to the line, rather, associated with that, with that line. All right. We look to see if that ID already exists in our path math, path map, path math, path map. In other words, have I already started tracking this touch, all right? If I have not, I put it in there. Or I'm sorry, if it is, I put that path in there and information about the motion in there. If it doesn't exist in there, then we create a new path and we add to it. If you remember, I said when I first touch the screen, it doesn't start drawing. It only starts drawing if I move. So if I were to touch the screen and be very careful not to move at all, it doesn't show anything. All it's done is recorded that this path starts at this point. It then will use that if I actually do start drawing. All right? So all we've done is we've recorded in our list of paths, this path map, path map, I wish they would have picked a better name, path map contains a list of the paths that are like currently active. So if it's not active, we track it. We're going to start tracking it. If it is active, then we're adding the points to it. Or actually, we, we reset it and, and start over. So yeah, we, we path reset. Yeah, new, t okay. 